already clicked me on, buddy. I guess she she said, get started there, buddy. Amen. But today, I've got something that uh, hit me the other day, and I really didn't even know it hit me when I first seen it. And um, then the Lord began to speak to me. I come walking through the kitchen the other day, and Glenna, uh, she, she puts her purse, she hangs it on the back of a chair at the kitchen table. And I come through there, and I noticed that there were two purses that were hanging, one on one chair and one on the other. And uh, I've often thought about this, but um, it kind of just hit me. And then the Lord began to show me something. But um, what is another word? I've done talked to Glenn about this in my office and the girls. Do you know what another word for purse is? That's one. It's a what? Handbag. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, take the hand off of it. And it's, it's really what it is, is a bag. A bag is something that contains certain things. And you carry that bag that is full of certain things. Somebody shout amen. And I got to thinking about that. And I got to thinking about bags. Lift your hand and say, what in the world is he going to preach to us today? About bags. I ain't talking about old bags. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> bags. And I got to thinking, and I got to looking. I'd heard this before, but I got to looking. Did you know that there are people, there are women that will spend a thousand dollars on a bag? They can call it a purse if they want to, but they, they spend a thousand. I, I read, I don't know if this is true. You ladies can help me if you want to. But as high as five to $10,000 to pay for a bag. You know, I got to thinking about that, and I got to thinking about why in the world would somebody spend $1,000 on a bag to carry a $5 bill around? An old wadded up big red chewing gum paper. Sister Carolyn Johnson down at down at uh, Huntington. One night I was having it bad. My throat was bad, Sister Tammy. I mean, I was having it rough. And she reached down in her bag, and she got me a Hall's cough drop. And she looked at me when she handed it to me. She said, "It's been in there a while, and by the lint that was on it, you, you ain't lying." <laughs> you have a bag that you carry uh, certain important things. Huh? If I, how many's got your bag with you today? And, and men, do not raise your hand. <laughs> how many's got your bag with you today? Just slip your hands up. In your bag, you've got some important things. Some have a have a checkbook, have their credit cards, their debit cards. Uh, some carry around their social security card. Those are important things that's carried in bags. Somebody say amen. And uh, then there are, you know, some of the non-necessities. Uh, Amelia or Emily said this morning, <laughs> because I was, I was quizzing them about this, didn't tell them why, but... I was quizzing about this, and Emily said, and, and Grandma's got old worn-out uh, 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 Kleenexes in there. And I've wondered about that because Glenda does. She'll carry, you know, dirty Kleenexes. But every once in a while, you need a Kleenex, and there ain't none around. They might be used, but they might be a corner on it that you, come on now. You can carry around in those bags. I'm going somewhere with this. I know some of you might think, "Why, well, God, Brother Raven, you've lost your mind. And you might think this is the boringest thing in the world. But the truth of the matter is, 
there's there's something about these bags that just that just captivated my mind and my spirit. Somebody shout amen. And so today I'm going to go into some scriptures, but I will entitle the message today, What Kind of Bag Are You Carrying? Somebody say amen. What kind of bag are you carrying? I could even ask a follow-up question to that. And the follow-up question would be, Sister Shea, what's in your bag? Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, somebody might say, you know, again, Brother Raven, what, what in the world are you doing here today? Uh, did that drive kind of mess with your head a little bit? No. If you'll stay with me, you'll see. Somebody shout Amen. Again, I can't understand why people would spend a thousand dollars on a bag to carry around five dollars. Uh, then I can't understand, and don't you all, if you got one, don't get mad at me, but I can't understand anybody that would want an imitation bag. Somebody, Emily hollered out, Mommy's got a Gucci bag. Well, I don't know what Gucci is. But Grandma said, I bet it's fake. <laughs> Somebody, I believe I read, now I don't know much about this stuff, but I believe I read about Louis Vuitton. Is that who it is? Vuitton, Louis Vuitton bags. You can go to New York City and you can get them fake ones, and it'll fool people. Well, somebody gave me a Rolex watch one time, and I thought I really got an offering until I found out it was a fake Rolex. There are a lot of knockoffs in those bags. That's important for you to remember today. Somebody shout amen. Go to the Bible. Go to the book of Micah. I know this is not a very familiar book that we read out of, but go to the book of Micah, chapter 6. Hallelujah. What? kind of bag are you carrying what's in your bag hallelujah what's in your bag everybody's got Micah chapter 6 shout amen beginning with verse number 11 look at these scriptures with me that prophet, that minor prophet's writing, he says, Shall I count them pure with the wicked balances and with the bag? Look at this now. With the bag of deceitful weights. Somebody say, man. Deceitful weights. For the rich men, watch this, thereof are full of violence. And the inhabitants thereof have spoken lies, and their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. Therefore also will I make thee sick in smiting thee, in making thee desolate because of thy sins. Thou shalt eat, but not be satisfied. Now I want you to look at this. Thou shalt eat, but not be satisfied. Thy casting down shall be in the midst of thee, and thou shalt take hold, but shalt not deliver. And that which thou deliverest will I give up to the sword. Thou shalt sow, but thou shalt not reap. Thou shalt tread the olives, but thou shalt not anoint thee with oil. And sweet wine, but shalt not drink the wine. Somebody say amen. That is a very clear, I want you to listen to this closely. That is a very clear warning to anyone that is carrying around a spiritual bag of deceit. I wish somebody would lift your hands and say amen. You know, when it talks about the balances, it's really talking about the weight of something. And the Bible says that their bags are full of deceitful weight. Somebody shout amen. 
I have never, I have never in all of my days, maybe you have, I don't know, but I have never seen such a day and time that we are living in as far as even the uh, ones who call themselves righteous and them that call themselves unrighteous. And by that, I just simply mean they that call themselves believers and them that call themselves unbelievers. Can I get some help here? And they are carrying around a bag of deceitful weights. Have you ever seen them? Somebody, somebody lived yet? What, what's this? Have you ever been around anybody that was just bitter all the time? I wish I could get some help in here. They're just bitter. Amen. They don't even need a reason. If their belly hurts, everybody else is going to uh, uh, reap the benefits because their belly hurts. If, if every time my belly hurt, you all had to uh, uh, reap the benefits of that, you'd be in trouble. So somebody look at your neighbor and say, man, it's not the belly ache. You know what it is? It's bitterness that has grabbed a hold of their life. Boy, I feel like preaching now. Bitterness is a deceitful weight because what bitterness does, it causes people to begin to believe that they, they deserve so much more than what they have. Can, well, can I, get, can I get somebody to just help me say this today? You ever seen anybody that thinks they're entitled? That's a word. I, well, I feel the Holy Ghost now. They feel entitled. You know, I am who I am, and I deserve so much more. When the truth of the matter is, there's only one thing that you and I and every other man, woman, boy, or girl that is born into this world, there's only one thing we deserve, and that's death. So, somebody shout amen. And because Jesus paid a price on that tree, we have been given the opportunity to come to him and him to keep us from death. Well, I dare somebody slip your hands up and shout amen. That goes back. Folks folk say, folk say it. I, I'm afraid to die. You know, well, come on now. In reality, I don't want to die, but I can't wait to die. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout amen. Amen. If you walk around in a place with, with bitterness in your life, I'm telling you right now, your bag is full of deceit. You ever seen jealous folk? I'm going to preach now. Can, can I preach now? I have never in my life seen so much jealousy than I have in the last 15 years of my life. I'm not talking about married couples. I'm talking about folk right in the church system. Jealousy eats away at their life. Somebody shout amen. I would, I would love, can I, can I preach a few? And I'm probably a little bit different than others but, uh, because I'm not as standoffish as some. But I would love to be able to uh, 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 fellowship more with the people. But the truth of the matter is that Glenn and I can't. Well, I'm going to preach now. Why, Brother Raven? Because if you do, somebody's going to get jealous over that. Well, if you'd invited us over for chicken dinner, we'd have come to your place. I, 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 some folk don't want you going somewhere else, but don't want you to come there. You know what that is? That's jealousy. I'm going to preach now. So, somebody slip your hands up and say jealousy. I've had, I've had folks uh, and watched them, not with me, but amongst themselves, jealous between each other. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, if you don't get rid of that jealousy, that jealousy is going to be a deceitful weight that is weighing the bag of spiritual things that God has blessed you with. So, somebody ought to lift that hand. Somebody said, Brother Raven, didn't you preach this during camp meeting about all this kind of stuff? Well, it, it, it'll go good to remind you. Somebody shout amen. Raise your hands and shout praise the Lord. 
I was preaching in Preachersville the other night. You, you better be careful about your bag. I, I, I'm preaching. Now, some, folk, some folk have an arrogancy that they are more smarter spiritually than everybody else. Can I get some help here? And, and, and they, they, they want you to think. I, I've had people over the years, I've preached messages, and then a day or two later, see them on Facebook or somebody send it to me and let me know. They said that they, uh, they even made mention of your message, uh, but they could go so much deeper than what you did. Uh, can I preach now? Well, I can tell you this. There's some folks that have that spirit of arrogancy and they have that spirit like, uh, uh, like they know everything else and they're a last day prophet and they're all of these things. But when you look at them, you can't tell the difference between them and the club down at Williamson. I wish I could get some help. Some folk that want to teach you about the uh, 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 about the days uh, uh, that are coming upon us, that want to preach to you about the end times, uh, they need to loosen up their dresses. Well, now, it's going to get cold in here, but I'll preach it anyhow. They, some men need to loosen up their britches. I wish I could get some help here. Some of them are so painted up and so tied up in their clothes, uh, they couldn't hardly move if they had to. And the reason that they're like that is because they're not wanting to please God. They want to be appealing to the audience. Uh, somebody lift your hands and shout amen. You want to know what that is? That is vainness. And if vainness is in your bag, you're full of deceit. You're weighted down. I dare somebody to slip up your hands and say you're weighted down in the balances of deceitfulness. I wish I could get, you know what, children? You better be careful. I, I told this to the church the other night. I'm going to tell my own people. You better be careful careful what you amen. You better be careful what you support. You better be careful what you share on your Facebook page because if you're dealing with folk that got that in their bag before you know it, you're going to want another Louis Vuitton because everybody else has got it. Somebody shout amen. I dropped by today to tell somebody you better be very careful and you better be very vigilant about what's in your bag and what kind of bag that you're carrying because the bag that is full of deceit will take you to hell. There's no other way to put it. Lift your hands. Say there's no other way to put it. If it's in your bag, it'll take you to hell. Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Bag of deceitful. Weights. Weights are them things that hold you back, tie, tie you down. Some said, no, Brother Raven, weights that you lift make you stronger, not these weights. They make you weaker. I dare somebody to lift your hands and shout hallelujah. They don't make you stronger. They make you weaker. They make you a prey. P-R-E-Y for the devil. Somebody shout hallelujah. They make you a P-R-E-Y pray for the enemy. Because once he sees that that's in your bag, huh, won't, won't, he, won't he pile it plumb full? I dare somebody to lift your hands and shout amen. Every now and then, Glenna gets them worthers. You know, you know what worthers are? Glenna loves them caramel candies. Amen. And every now and then she'll get a bag and she'll pile her bag full of them worthers. Somebody shout amen. They some folk walking around thinking that the things that are in their bags are, are sweet savor. When in reality it's sour as it can be. And it's destroying their lives. Somebody slip up your hands and say it's destroying their lives. 
It is absolutely without a shadow of a doubt. It is destroying their testimony. It is destroying the witness. Somebody shout amen. I don't want nothing to do with jealousy. Lift up your hands and say, I don't want nothing to do with bitterness. Don't want nothing to do with strife. Don't want nothing to do with lies. Come on, somebody. There's so many people that are carrying around a bag of lies. Ain't no wonder they call them windbags. Well, I wish somebody slip your hands up and say, I've known a few. There are a whole lot of windbags sitting behind pulpits, and they're windy. Can, can, can I get some help here? I don't want that. I want the truth. Lift your hand. Say, I want my bag full of truth. I want my bag full of the goodness of God, full of the truth of God, and full of everything that he wants for his people. Shout Hallelujah. Lord, look at your neighbor and say, what's in your bag? I think, I think it'd be a terrible thing to be a preacher. And people walk out and say, boy, that's the biggest wind bag I ever heard. Can I get some help here? You know who are the wind bags behind the pulpits? They ain't preachers. They're salesmen. God, I wish I, I, wish I could get some help. So, so they're, they're the best used car salesmen that ever was. And they're standing behind pulpits with a microphone in their hand, carrying a Bible under their arm, and trying to sell their revelation. I, I got a real problem. Can I preach a few minutes? I got a real problem with folk that want to stand and want to try to give revelation when they need revelation. I dare you to look at your neighbor and say, they need revelation. So I said, this is the corniest message I've, you've ever preached. Oh, no, no, no. It's a deep revelation if people will grab a hold of it. Because it does matter. Look at your neighbor and say, it does matter what you're carrying in your bag. Your bag is not something that slips on your arm or your hand. Your bag is your heart. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I ain't looking for no fake bag neither. Raise that hand and say, no fake bag. Bag of deceitful weights. Folk that think that they can live right in sin. Oh. Well, it's going to take me a while, ain't it? Huh? They, they, they walk around and say that they're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, and their bags are full of deceitful weights. They be, at, at one time, they'd have never let that in their bag. Okay, anybody know anybody? They'd have never let that in their bag, but now, you know, they've evolved. See, they didn't, they, they'd have never let none of that, none of that alcohol or booze or, 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 or nastiness of the world and lust of the flesh. They'd have never let none of that in their bag. And now they think they can shack up and still preach. I'm preaching, you ain't a manning. This ain't going to go over very well. I might, if you want to send me your note and send it on. You can't be the things that the Bible says you can't be and still try to be what the Bible says. If you got that, you can't be. Ain't nobody want to hear me shacking up. Some have said, well, I got a marriage license. You still shacked up. I dare somebody to lift your hands and say he preaching right. They, they, they got a marriage license from the county courthouse, but that don't mean they're married. They're married to the wrong one, still trying to live right, saying that they're living right and saying that they lived right through it. If the book says it's sin, it's sin. If the book says that it will keep you from an office of ministry, it will keep you from an office of ministry. So if you overtrod that, if you tread over that, you got something in your bag, honey. It's called deceit. Shout amen. And shame on you preachers that allow it in your pulpit. I'm just trying to help them. The only way you can help that is to sit them down. Teach them truth. And then let them make the choice. 
Preach on, brother. That's good preaching. I don't care what. Shame on folk letting things in their pulpit. They got walking around with bags. Not a bag. Bags of deceit. Preach on. Bag of deceitful weights. Weights of sin. What's the Bible say? Lay aside. Don't it say it? Lay aside what? Some weights? What, what, whatever you deem necessary? Or lay aside every weight of what? Of sin. Somebody shout amen. Amen. They, 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 they want to get to the, to, to the last part of that scripture that, that so easily beset us. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to know what the weight is. It's the weight of sin that so easily be, I can't understand how folk can just go along with anything nowadays. Just so easily. Preach on. Just so easily turn ahead to that. And say, well, it's just life. And we've evolved. You're going to evolve, all right. Let me tell you what else ain't evolved. Heaven ain't evolved. It was created with streets, gold walls, and jasper gates of pearl. And where Jesus Christ will be the sun that will light the city. Come out and get some help. Don't say 24 hours a day because there'll be no day there. And there'll be no night there. For eternity, he will be the light. Let me tell you what else hasn't evolved. Hell. The only evolving that we read in the scripture that hell has done is it has bored or broadened its horizons. God, I dare somebody to lift your hands and say, it has increased its borders. It's evolved to become bigger and bigger and bigger. Amen. Evolved. The weights of sin that so easily beset us. And an amazing thing, 50 years ago, Sister Shay, 50, 60 years ago, they got saved. They put the television out of the house if they had money to have one. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Nowadays, there's so much on that television. I get, I, I get amazed when people say, well, I, they just want me to have the basic channels. You can't even handle the basic channels no more. Let alone HBO Max. Yeah. What a good preaching. Somebody slip your hand. I had to go to the cable company the other day because every year they make us re-up or they just charge us whatever they want to. And they give me the package and they tell me what's on. I said, well, can't you take that off? They said, no, it's part of the bundle. Ain't that amazing? So I got a choice. I either pay the cheaper price have the channels. Ain't nobody wanted to hear me. So, somebody slip your hands up and say, if you ain't got no more God than that, to stay off of them. You might just be thinking you might already just get rid of the whole thing. I'm preaching better than I'm getting a mind. The Bible says if your eye offends you, God Almighty, I ain't plucking that off. I ain't getting rid of that. Yeah, that's why your bag is full of weights that are deceitful. Amen. If your eye offends you, cut it, pluck it out. If your arm offends you, somebody shout amen. amen. I remember one time Glenna, Glenna got so mad I bought a car. She said, you're going to get rid of that car, and she made it tough on me. I finally just got rid of it. She said, you're going to get the cheapest car you can get. I said, I'll show her. I bought a five-speed clutch. No air conditioning and no radio. Whew. 
I said, now drive that. We needed air conditioning. But even that radio don't have to be on. Ain't nobody wanting to hear me. I'm preaching better. I'm flipping through the channels. Last night coming home trying to find something to keep me awake. All of a sudden I heard this banjo picking and I heard this uh, mandolin and I heard this um, uh, dobro and boy that sounded good and I, I just kept it on there a few minutes and the next thing I know this woman come on there and she started singing run Rufus run I thought run Rufus run and I started listening to that and the lyrics was talking about a 12 year old boy that a daddy over in uh, uh, um, one of the counties over there by Harlan uh, that was making moonshine instead of going down into the deep mines. And then he started this 12-year-old boy taking moonshine to Harlan. <laughs> and so they wrote a song about it. She said it was a real true story. She wrote a song about it, Run, Rufus, Run. Click. Somebody slip your hands up and say, there's some of that stuff you ain't... You ain't got no business. I am preaching better. Amen. Some some folk don't just listen to it. They run and buy tickets to see it. Well, I'm a preaching better and I'm getting a mind. And then talk about a church that takes up tithes and offerings. Amen. Something in somebody's bag. I dare somebody lift your hand and say, don't get mad at him. He's just telling the truth. They got something in their bag. It ain't very good. Raise up that hand and say it ain't very good. A bag of deceitful weights, weights of sin. Go to Isaiah. Go to Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46. And then turn to Haggai and put your finger in Haggai chapter 1. Isaiah 46 and Haggai chapter 1. Isaiah 46, Haggai chapter 1. Something just hit my mind. I better make a better make a note of that. Isaiah chapter forty six. Hey God, chapter one. How many's got it? I know I'm taking a little time here, but. I think we need this. Look at somebody say, boy, we need this. Because it matters what's in your bag. Isaiah 46. Look at verse 5 and 6. Look what Isaiah wrote. He said, to whom will ye liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be like now watch this. They lavish gold out of what? <laughs> and weigh silver in the balance and hire a goldsmith to maketh it a god. They fall down, yea, they what? Oh, it's a dangerous thing to have certain things in your bag. They bear him upon the shoulder and they carry him and set him in his place and he standeth from his place shall he not remove yea one shall cry unto him yet can he not answer nor save him out of his trouble Whew. somebody slip your hands up and say be careful that what you're carrying in your bag you don't make a god Lord, have mercy, Jesus. 
Because here's what will happen. Go, go, to, go to Haggai. Go to Haggai. Here's what will happen if you're not careful about what you carry in your bag. Verse number 6 says, Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe, uh, ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a what? <laughs> Somebody lift your hands and say, there, there are different kinds of bags. Now the bags that people hope to have will contain and you will not leak anything out. But if you have made certain things a God, talking about silver and gold, now watch this, that's not just talking about monies. There are more things that are silver or gold. Anything that is materialistic, somebody shout hallelujah. You can make a vehicle a God. You can make a motorcycle, a boat. So, well, I'm preaching Somebody shout amen. You can make a timeshare a God. Am I preaching or not? Somebody slip up your hands and say, if you make it out to be a God, now what happens is you're carrying it in a bag that has holes, so therefore you eat all the time, but you ain't never full. You have clothes, but you ain't never warm. You have all the things of this natural realm, but it does you no good at all because you're walking with a bag that has holes. Somebody ought to lift your hands and shout, hallelujah. Ain't no wonder, ain't no wonder Jesus used this in his vernacular when he said silver and gold will pass away. I dare somebody to lift your hand and say, I'd rather have the word in my bag. <laughs> Something that I know when I'm in trouble, it'll help me. Something that I know when I'm sick, it will heal me. Something that I know when I got family troubles, it'll bring peace. I dare somebody to lift up your hands and say, instead of all the material things of this world, and then to walk around and then reach in your bag thinking you can get it out and use it for your advantage only to reach into an empty bag. God, I, I am preaching, boy, an empty bag. I got everything I need. Well, let's check your bag. Yeah. I got all that I want. Let's, when, when trouble happens, let's reach in your bag. Yeah. Amen. I'm a success. Let's reach in your bag Amen. when trouble comes. Yeah. When the end comes upon your life. When the last breath is leaving your body. When there's no more tomorrows. When there's no more four o'clocks when it's 12 o'clock. And the final breath is leaving your body. Let's reach in your bag. Well, I dare somebody to lift your hands. Say, God, help us to be mindful of our bags, what kind of bag we're carrying and what's in it because what's in it can affect the bag. God, somebody lift your hand. They know, any of you women right here today, any of you women got any bananas in your bags? Nobody. Anybody got a, a, an apple? Ain't nobody. Anybody got any kind of fruit? Anybody got a hamburger? Anybody got any kind of food besides 
peppermints got laying all over them? Anybody? Let me tell you something. Put a peach in your bag and leave it. I'm preaching. I'm going to use this as an example because I just thought of it and I don't want to forget it. There's a, there's a, there's a, a, a bowl of uh, banana pudding out in the refrigerator. Don't forget it. They brought it to me last night. Don't forget that. If I'd have left it in the vehicle, it is spoiled. If you leave a peach or a piece of fruit in your bag and leave it long enough, won't the sun affect it? Won't the heat affect it? I wish I could get some help in this place. And you know what it will do? It will ruin your bag. I dare somebody. Have any of you ladies ever had a piece of hard candy down in your bag and forget your bag in the hot sun? Somebody lift your hand and say, I've been there. Now, you men, if you raise your hands, we got problems today. Well, I'm going to talk to you after service. But you women, you, you, ever, had, you ever had anything melt? Yeah. Can I get some help here? Somebody slip up your hand and say, ooh, it'll mess your whole bag up. If you have love for money more than love of God, it's messing your bag up. So somebody lift you. If you if you've made the things of the natural realm a, a God in your life, it's messed up your bag. Because when you really need to reach in your bag and get the things of God, you will find that it is a sticky mess. You will find that there are holes in your bag. You will find that what you thought was in there ain't in there. Can I get somebody to slip your hands up and shout amen? There have been times that I've reached in my wallet and I got a little hiding spot. Amen. And in the hiding spot, uh, there have been times that I needed to, to reach into the hiding spot and pull something out only to forget that I'd already spent it. I wish I could get some help in here. There are a whole lot of folk that are reaching in their bags in these last days, in these tribulating times. Somebody shout amen. Only to find that they don't have what they need. They don't have the peace that they ought to have. They don't have the joy that they ought to have. They don't have the healing that they ought to have. They don't have the deliverance that they ought to have. And it's all because maybe it was there at a time but they let something else disturb and ruin their bag preach on brother Raven somebody lift your hands and say God help us to be mindful of our bags it's too late it's too late to be reaching in that bag and Finding it needs to be filled at certain times of your life. And no wonder Jesus said, I'll laugh at you when your calamity hits and I'll mock you when your fear cometh. Pre preach on, Brother Raven. Ain't no wonder, Sister Anna Mae, that that he said, you better seek me while I can be found. You, bet, you know what that means? You better have the things in your bag and be ready for what's coming. Down there, I dare somebody lift them hands and shout, Amen. 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 It matters what's in your bag. It matters what kind of shape your bag is in. It amazes me. How many, how many just this week, I, 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 I'm talking to you later, how many in this building uh, changed your bag this week? Well, you can raise your hand, Don. It. It's all right. It's all right to let folk know you got more than one bag. I mean, we know you carry one bag. <laughs> couldn't couldn't go without getting that in. Somebody shout, "Amen!" How many times a year do people change their bags? I know I live with a woman. 
certain times, certain times she's getting another bag that she has stored. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. We was talking about this the other day. Glenna was raised in a house with one bathroom. And me too. She had three siblings, one bathroom. Me too. Two siblings. Mommy and daddy and me in one bathroom. Y'all know what a one bathroom house is like? Everybody knows what a one bathroom house. Just raise your hand and say, oh, the struggle. <laughs> We've been blessed. Glenn and I, we, we lived in a house where we had one closet. How in the world did we only have one closet? I built, I built an office at the other end of the house, took over half of the garage, built an office. And the first thing I said when I built that office, I want my own closet. Never did get a door on it. But I had a closet. Come on now. Glenna's got her own closet. I, 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 I never opened the door. The only close thing that I come to that door is to close it. She's going to get mad at me. But it's full. It's full. And it's full of not just clothes. The bags. It's a shame, girls. Don't you get mad at me. But I asked, I asked my experts, Glenna, Emily, and Amelia. And before Grandma could say a word, Emily and Amelia spewed it out. If a woman cleans her closet, what are three things she puts on? Facebook to sell. Say it, Emily. Shoes, clothes, and what? And bags. Don't you get mad at me. Full and constantly changing. There needs to be one. I'm not talking natural. I'm talking spiritual. There needs to be one bag change. Go to Job. I'm trying to quit. Go to Job 14. And Proverbs 16. If you're mad today. If you're mad watching me, you might ought to do what they do down there at the airport. You might ought to do a bag check. There's some folk going, oh, Lord. Send, you, send your letters, P.O. Box 925, Belfry, Kentucky, 41514. Job 14, you got it? Proverbs 16, you got it? Here's the only bag chain change any of us need. Job 14 and 17, here's the bag I want. Job said, my transgression is sealed up in a bag. And thou sowest up my iniquity. Somebody lift your hand and say, I want my sin in a sealed bag. Proverbs 16 and 11 says, a just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his works. God Almighty. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I'm, I'm looking to change bags today. I don't want none of them bags full of deceitfulness. I want, I want to make sure, number one, that, that my sins and my iniquities are sealed up in a bag and sewn up. And then the Lord take that bag, throw it into the deepest part of the ocean as far as the east is from the west. And never again will I ever see that bag. 
God, I dare somebody to lift your hands and shout amen. The bag that I want is a just weight and a balance, which means uh, inside of the bag that we're talking about, we have, we have the gifts of the Spirit. We have the, uh, uh, the fruit of the Spirit. We have the things and the promises of God. We have his mercy. We have his grace. We have his long suffering. Those are the weights I want in my bag. And for that to be a reality, you must then and only then realize I have nothing to do with this bag. That's why the Bible says that we are to serve him, Sister Shay, with our whole heart. Knowing that the heart is the bag in which God will put his things or the devil. <laughs> Somebody ought to slip up your hand and say, I want the Lord <laughs> to organize my bag. Mm, can I get some help in this building? I got, I got a feeling some of you women going to go home and organize your bags today. <sighs> I want people here underneath the sound of my voice for us to have our bags organized. If there be any deceitful weights, I want it gone. Somebody lift your hands and say, I want it gone. If there be anything that is not likened unto him, if there be anything that would be unpleasing to him, somebody shout amen. I don't care what it is. Lift your hand and say, don't get, don't get so close to things that, that God's trying to tell you to get rid of. Don't, 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 don't start loving things that God's not pleased with. I wish I could get some help here. Because sooner or later, and, and it's more sooner than it will be later, it will deceive you into a place that before you know it, you'll reach in your bag when you need something. And it won't be there. Preach, Brother Raven. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody slip your hands up. And ladies and gentlemen, there ain't nothing worse than pouring yourself a big bowl of Rice Krispie uh, uh, a cereal, Cheerios, and in our case, Cat and Crunch. Getting you a big bowl and filling that thing all the way to the top as much as you can get inside of it and then get in the refrigerator and pull out the milk and they ain't enough. Or it's out of date. Ain't nothing worse. Somebody lift your hands and say, ain't nothing worse. So I dare say, ain't nothing worse than somebody baking you a dozen chocolate chip cookies and you go to the refrigerator and get that jug of milk and it's about 10 days overdue. You know what Glenna says? Well, smell it. I ain't smelling it. I ain't stupid. Can I get some? I, I don't want no buttermilk with my chocolate chip cookies. I don't want nothing's got to, uh, what do they call that, culture or whatever that is. I don't want nothing to do with any of that. I dare somebody to lift up them hands and say, you better be careful that you keep things in date. And I'm not talking about your refrigerator. I'm talking about your bag. Somebody say, you know what you know? The only evolving that we need to be is we become more like him. <laughs> Somebody lift your hands and shout amen. That we take, that we take a daily inventory. Uh, 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 that lift your hands and say a daily inventory of our bags to make sure that what's in it is not a deceitful weight. But it is the very things of God that I'm going to need on a daily basis. And God forbid in my last few breaths. Shout amen. amen. My transgression is sealed. That's what Job said. Sealed. Here, here Job is in the shape that he's in, all the things that he went through, and here comes his wife and says, why don't you just curse God and die? And Job looks at her and says, what? You're a foolish woman. You talk just like a fool. There's that word, foolish. Amen. You, know, you, you know what made her foolish? 
She was faithless. She was forgetful that everything her and Job ever had was because of God. And because she became faithless because of her forgetfulness, she became foolish. Well, that'll preach a while, won't it? Job said, oh, wait a minute here. You all say whatever you want. His friends even whispered amongst themselves, wonder what he did, Nikita. Wonder, wonder what that Job did to bring this. Job had to look at all of them and say, listen. Whew. Hallelujah. My transgression, sin, anything that I had committed before the Lord has already, somebody raise your right hand and say, it's already sealed in a bag. The last thing you need to do is go looking for another bag once he, man, preach it. I dare somebody to lift your hands and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The last thing you need to do is go looking for another bag after the Lord has sealed yours up. Amen. Or for God's sakes, unseal it. Yeah. Preach on, Brother Raven. Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. There's a motel down there that Glenn and I and the kids have stayed in. It's owned by Dolly Parton. Down on the bottom floor, right before you go into a restaurant that she has, there's a case. And inside that case, there's a box. And that box has a song that she wrote. She never recorded, never let nobody hear it except them that were close around her, she sealed it in that box. And she wants it to be taken out, I believe at the age of 100, her 100th birthday. She said then if she's living, she'll do it. If not, she's give strict instructions to unseal that box and take that song out. I thought of that the other day, and I thought, man, that takes a lot of willpower. I know she's got all the money in the world, but what if she thinks in her mind, that's a hit. Somebody said, I bet it's something to do with Christianity. It'll be too late if she's dead. Don't you get mad at me. That whole lot of folk think she's, she's the closest thing to an angel that there is. I've got news for you all. No, she ain't. Slip up your hands and say, no, she ain't. If she was, she'd get rid of all that foolishness. If she was, she wouldn't, she wouldn't tell everybody, you know what? Everybody has a right to love anybody they want. No, you don't. I wish somebody, when, when they're talking about love, anybody they want, you know what they're talking about? Even if it's of the same sex. And I'm telling you, they don't have the right because God didn't create us like that. Amen. Somebody shout amen. You know what you're telling God right there? You're telling God our ways are better than. You know what them folks got? A bad bag, honey. Slip up that hand and say, I don't want no bad bag. I don't want no song sealed in a box that when I'm 100, whether or not I'm dead or alive, want it to be sung. I want the things in my bag that if I die within the next 24 hours, I can reach inside that bag and have a peace that passeth understanding. Have a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Have the knowledge of knowing to step from this life, just stepping into the next life. Amen. That's to come down to the end, reach in your bag and not know. Raise that hand and say, that's a dangerous place to be. And that's a dangerous bag to have. If you believe that, lift your hands all over this building. Come on, lift it.